is closer. Everybody, everybody's sleeping here. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. How you doing, bro? I'm okay. Just back from work. I'm six hours ahead of you. Oh shit! Yeah, I like that, <laughs> that Sex Pistols. Po Let's get it rocking, cause I, yeah, uh, yeah, I got charity work to do. So sure, sure. So, John, thank you for speaking for Montenegro, uh, Montenegro on Web podcast rewinding. How are you? I'm doing good, brother. Just up here in New York for the moment. You Is know, it nice weather there. Uh, well, it's not as nice as Florida. I, I live in Florida now. It's eighty yeah. degrees. You know, right. it's it's cold, but whatever. I just I just deal with it. <laughs> right. So before we start to talk about the album, I just want to ask you about your book, Evolution of Cro-Magnon. I read it two years ago, and it was and it was so intense, almost unreal movie story. Uh, I want to know how you felt back then when you started writing. Um. Well, you know, I never really intended to write the book. I was I was working on a feature film. Yeah. And uh a lot of the stuff was from my book and my writing partner was the one who suggested like, "Hey, you know, with this crazy story, I never really told anybody, you know, about where I came from, the Foster Homes and yeah. I never really spoke about it." And um she was like, "You got to write a book, dude." And when she she left uh, to go to Sydney to do uh, some theater work, um, and she left a note on my desk that said, "Write the book." And you know, I started started writing, but every time I came to like the most painful stuff, I, I yeah. just I was having you know it was stuff that I hadn't dealt with since I was a kid, so it just right. opened up a lot of old wounds and. Um, you know, I, I would have fucking breakdowns and, and just shelve it for months, you know, uh, or, or try to write around it. Yeah. And it's part of it's integral to the story. Mm. So um, I was having a huge inner conflict with putting it in the book. And I was taking a writing class with uh, my mm. teacher and I approached him. And I wrote about it in the book and I said, you know, what about a kid that was, uh, you know, abused? And yeah. uh, he stopped me and said, it's the number one cliche in writing. Um, it's used by writers who can't get sympathy for a character because they're yeah. flat characters and they don't do their. So they think, OK, if I just put in some abuse, then people are going to care about my character. And he said, it's not what happened to a character. It's it's what they do as a result. And that's actually where the story lies. Yeah. So then the light came on and I was like, and then he wrote in my book. When I, I got his book, it's called Story. And when he signed mm -hmm. it to me after the, after the class was over, he wrote, always write the truth. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, I just soldiered up and it, it, it took me. You know, I'm a writer. I don't have people write my book and then put my yeah. name on it and say, oh, yeah, uh, with this person or even worse, not even mention the ghostwriter. I wrote every single word. I'm a writer. I studied writing. I've been doing this for years. I'm not a hack. I yeah. spent four years writing that book. And I think the energy and power of the story comes through on the pages. And that's what I and that's what I wanted. So, yeah. That's why I think uh, people realize that why it's heavy. And uh, I think it was a big relief when you finished it. Man, I cried, dude. I yeah. cried so much writing that book. And, you know, and now I'm writing a book on addiction. My brother just died mm. uh, from drugs. Oh. So, you know, it's a lot of... Uh, the material world is a lot of pain, man. Yeah. And, and when we try to when we try to cover the pain with drugs and alcohol, it never ends good. You know, like my brother wasn't able to really process what happened to us as kids and nobody talked about it and all this stuff. But, um, you know, we can't think that just because we take some drugs and some alcohol or do whatever or, or become addicted to all this other stuff, you know, 
You yeah. could you could be addicted to anything, to social media. You could be addicted to sex. We look for so many ways to fill a void within us, but right. the actual fact of the matter is we have to face what's inside. And mm. when you don't do that, then you try to deal with all the external things that's going on in the world. That's why everybody's losing their fucking minds right. during COVID and all this other shit. And I never did. Mm. Now, if you question what the governments do, you're a fucking, you're a yeah. conspiracy theorist. It's, it's such fucking bullshit. Yeah. I'm like, I didn't lose my mind during COVID. I I I mm. knew first of all. I was like, well, should I really trust these companies who have a history of corruption and killing yeah. people? So I just kept my wits about me. I exercised. I worked out. I did everything in my life. Prepared me for the insanity mm. of the last uh, almost three years now. And yeah. I just kept. I competed and I raced. I I I finished Ironmans. I finished two mm. books. Yeah, uh, yeah. I started a coaching business. Right. So, you, you know, you could say whatever the fuck you want, but here's the deal. It don't matter what we say. It matters what we do. Mm. And that's why my teacher, Prabhupada, said example is better than precept. And now you got all these people running their mouths on social media, all this bullshit. But, you know, listen, get your own house in order. You know what I'm saying? Right. Fix your shit. Right. Don't, worry, don't worry about everybody else and trying to put a label that yeah. the government told you to put a label on people who question what they're mm. doing. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, you know, and like I said, I'm writing this book on addiction and there, it, I mean, I think this book is going to do its job and it's to show that, yeah there's always hope in life. I mean, I was an addict. I was almost murdered fucking 10 times over when I was on my drug tear and I'm still here. I'm still making music. I'm clean and sober. I've, I still compete in Ironmans. I, I just turned 60 years old. Yeah. And, you know, and my mission in life is to help people. So if right. you're not, if, if you're not down with that and you're into talking shit, stay the fuck out of my way. Cause I'm going right. to fucking roll over you. Yeah, and, and that's what I think. Fine. Yeah, you 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 realize on time that you have a sport, you have music, you have a uh, lot of way out, and meditation, and yeah, a lot of stuff. This this I this I do every day, man. Yeah. I meditate. I do yoga. I exercise. I hit the gym. I hit the weights. I box. I do whatever. I do whatever I have to do to keep yeah. my mind right. And, you know? and, and how hard is it for young younger people who looking for salvation in groups like you know punk rock uh i don't know metal hardcore uh do you well, think well, we, well well you you go ahead i'm sorry uh do you think that we need to think for ourselves not in a group i just wrote the, the group just, the, the group think shit is toxic, man. And that's mm. the problem. Just like right now, I spoke out against the government. So there's these people and now they're all online and they're saying that I support Trump. I'm mm. fucking MAGA. I'm a conspiracy theorist. Yeah. I'm a racist. They just keep throwing all these fucking lies out there. Anybody that knows me knows that none of that yeah. shit is true. But you know what? They read it online mm. and then they go and they all pile on and they 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 think they, I'm, I've never even had a conversation with any of these people see we were individuals and in, with punk rock we thought for ourselves there was you were always allowed to have a difference of opinion that mm. was the other thing mm. when i when i got into punk rock 77 i heard the pistols i fucking heard the damn the fucking the dead boys all this shit going yeah. to shows in new york the ramones fucking seeing them in rockaway beach where mm. you know they sang the song i was i was a homeless fucking 14 year old on the streets of rockaway beach seeing the fucking yeah. ramones going to CBGBs. I'm like, everybody was allowed to have a difference of opinion. But see, this is the government programming these people that mm. we all have to be in lockstep mentally. Yeah, That's a fucking, that is a fucking mind fuck because it never used to be like, I worked for the bad brains. I mm -hmm. fucking fought racists. I fought Nazis in the Cro-Mags. I fucking fought motherfuckers three times my size because they talk yeah. shit. Yeah. So you better do some fucking research before you go opening your mouth. But that mm. is just what's happening. It's this toxic group think. Mm. Oh, he talked bad against the shots. He's a conspiracy. 
Well, guess what? Motherfuckers are taking five shots and still getting fucking COVID now and everything. Yeah. yeah. It's fucking, and they're yeah. still fucking rolling with what the government's telling them. Yeah. Yeah. Read a fucking book, educate yourself, get the fuck off social media, take a break, man. Mm. It's toxic. I use right. social media for good purposes. Mm. And I'll tell you a story, a story, a story. Yes. Just the other day, I made a funny comment on this page, right? It's a comedy page. Mm. And I made a joke and they was, and it's a, it's one by Spanish dudes in LA, right? It's called yeah. Who's Gone Wild. So they were talking shit against this like white yuppie dude. I go, yeah, it's white fragility. Ha ha ha. <laughs> right. <laughs> so then this dude comes on and starts talking all mad shit. Oh, you're fucking washed up. You're an old man. You just suck fucking Joe Rogan's dick in the bed. Like being yeah. totally disrespectful out of the blue. Mm. I said, yo, my man, I don't even know you. What the fuck are you talking shit for? He's yeah. like, yeah, fuck you. You're just the old washed up. I said, I'll tell you what. Meet me in Central Park. <laughs> tomorrow fucking morning we'll run 15 miles and then we'll go to the backfield and spa and after that i want to see you call me a fucking yeah. old man so what is he write on social media that i go on social media threatening people right, to fight right. yeah. this is what this is what's going on see yeah. i come from the old school in new york city you never talk shit there was mm. no social media if i yeah. talk if i wanted to say something to somebody it was this fucking close. Yeah. It was up close and personal. And you better know how to fucking defend yourself. See, all these people, they hide behind fake profiles online. They're not, they're fucking cowards. So I don't even pay them no fucking mind. I'm here to do yeah. a bigger fucking work than any of this other social media group think toxic bullshit. And how the fuck are you calling yourself hardcore punk and you sided with the government against you cannibalized people on your fucking scene because the government told you what to do? I mean, look at that. If that does not tell you that the shit has gone off the rails, mm. I don't know what the fuck will. Yeah. And also in the book, you're talking about religion, organized religion. And yeah. that's that's the uh, also one of the things for me. Uh, which brainwashed people in a lot of way turned the money. Yeah. But this is organized religion too. This yeah. is the yeah. this is the religion right. of fake also, wokeness. Yeah. This is a religion. They've turned this shit has become a cult. Right. And see, I was in a cult. And if you questioned the leaders of the cult and what they were doing, everybody, everybody turned on you. Mm. Right? I would I was seeing people fucking sell drugs, rape children, do all this shit. And I'm like, when I spoke out against it, the entire movement turned against me. And that's mm. what's happening now. So it's a fucking cult. They've created mm. a cult and it's the fucking, it's the, it's the cult of personality. It's like, just like fucking living color said, listen to the fucking song. This is what's, this is what's going on. If you read any of my lyrics since the first, my first bit, Cro-Mags, the first Cro-Mags in 81, yeah. Blood Cloud in 81, Cro-Mags again on Age of Quarrel. Just read any of the sh I have not changed. I'm the same mm. motherfucker that I was. I called out all the bullshit. Now when you do it, they put all these labels on you. So mm. you know what? Have at it. You're in a fucking cult and you don't even fucking realize it. And just like Jim Jones, you drank the Kool-Aid, just like mm. they did in Guyana. You're all yeah. drinking the fucking government Kool-Aid. Mm. it's like you know there's a great meme and 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 it was jim jones who killed all those people in guyana and he goes i killed hundreds of people and fauci said hold my drink <laughs> because he let a lot of people die because he yeah. he he re there was doctors in america that were healing people of covid with therapeutics and he mm. stopped it so that the pharmaceutical company that he got money from Moderna and Pfizer, yeah, could get the emergency use for this for these shots because you can't mm. get that unless there's no treatments. That's why yeah. they block the treatments. I know the doctor who was saving thousands of lives in Texas. They're trying to strip his medical license now. Mm. So you know, it it's like I said, I don't want to harp too much on it, but I'm yeah. the same yeah. fucker. 
And, and, and I told all these people, yo, let's have a fucking debate. Let's have a discussion about right. it. Nobody, yeah. nobody wants to discuss it. They just want to, they just want to write a bunch of fucking lies about you. Mm. That's how they discuss shit. It's group think they fucking, they talk all this shit on social media. Now, all of a sudden, in, I got people saying that I'm a racist. I'm a homophobe. I'm I'm a fucking mm. transphobe. I'm a fucking Trump supporter. I'm a MAGA. I'm like anybody that saw Tropic Thunder, right? What did Robert yeah. Downey Jr. do? He 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 put yeah. the prosthetics on. So I did a skit like that in New York City. It wasn't blackface. I paid a fucking Hollywood makeup artist to put mm. all the fucking prosthetics on me. And we did this skit that I was a rapper who became homeless because a DJ fucking stole my, um, because another rapper stole my DJ. And it was mm. at this restaurant. And I walk in and the dude, the black dude at the door was like the owner of the restaurant, Kate, because this is what they say. Then they say, I dressed in blackface. This, this, this is how the lies go. Yeah, yeah. It was a five hundred dollar fucking makeup job. I had the prosthetics. There was no shoe polish on my face. It was a professional. The owner of the restaurant, Kate, told me later that she told the black doorman not to let that homeless dude in. Mm. They thought, and I roll up into the restaurant, and the black dude who I knew goes, "Yo," he goes, "Yo, you can't come in, my man." And I go, "Yo, it's John Joseph," and he starts fucking cracking up. He's like, holy, <laughs> I had the skull, the DMX fucking <laughs> skull cap, the fucking everything, right? The professional makeup job all the way around. And he's like, yo, you're fucking crazy. I couldn't tell that was you. So it was a comedy skit, just yeah. just like just like what um, Robert Downey Jr. did in Tropic yeah. Thunder. It was a makeup job. It wasn't me putting like what, what, um, what Trudeau did. He put black shoes right, on. Right. It was yeah. a professional makeup job. I was doing a comedy skit like the Wayans brothers that did white chicks, right? Mm, Same shit. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a professional job. And we pulled off the fucking skit and yeah. it was fucking hilarious. But then what is then what do these hardcore motherfuckers say? Oh, he dressed in blackface. He's a racist. <laughs> but there's always the truth. Yeah. And then it's yeah. the fucking bullshit stories that's being made up. But when I said, yo, you want to discuss what happened? Just like Cortex Records, the biggest distributor, they put my record up. They're like, how could you support this dude? He's fucking mm. Mm. Meanwhile, Mina Caputo went on and made a post from Life of Agony and said, yo, I've known yeah. John 30 years. I love him. He helped me with my transition. He was there for me every day. He's there for fucking friends of mine, Michael Alago, who was sick during COVID. He delivered mm. food, and, like all of this shit. They ganged up on him and said, fuck yeah. you, we're burning your records and all this other shit. This is so, what's going on. Yeah, you have to fight for people. But you know what? None of them want to have a conversation. They want to hide behind. Yeah, yeah, I saw one of them. Yeah. I saw one of them on the street in New York the last time I was here. He tried to walk by me. I go, nah, motherfucker, you ain't walking by me. I said, here I am. Say that shit to my fucking face. Yeah. Say that shit to my face. That's where I come from. Yeah. Mike Tyson said, "You all been comfortable with talking shit online that would get you punched in the face on the fucking street." That's right. where I come from. You don't run right. your mouth. Don't right. fucking move your mouth. Right. Right. And if you want to do it, step out from behind your fake profile and, and come yeah. meet me. Like I told the dude. Then he writes, oh, John Joseph's a bully. <laughs> Motherfucker, first of all, you're twice my size. You told, yeah. me to to, you told me to go to Brooklyn. He said, come to Brooklyn. I'll kick your ass. I said, come to Manhattan. We'll meet in the middle. Yeah. Like, meet me in the middle. We'll run 15 miles and then we'll spar. I want to see you call me an old man after that. If you even make it past the first fucking three miles of the run. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, man, I just have a laugh with this yeah. shit. I don't give yeah. a fuck. I'm still making music. I, right. I, 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 I fucking challenge anybody to find a single racist homophobe, like anything in any yeah. of my fucking lyrics even new york right so when i said in uh, oh he's he's uh 
he's an anti-gay. He, because I've said in Signs of the Times, corruption and faggots all around me. That was a <laughs> street. That was a New York street term for a fucking right. child for right. a loud mouth. Yeah. That yo, don't be a fucking faggot. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, now because of everything that's going on, would I ever use that word again? No. What yeah. about fucking minor threat? Guilty of being white. Mm. What about the circle jerks? Operation, operation, snip and tie, snip. So everybody was fucking talking shit. Yeah. And the word yeah. faggot didn't mean I'm calling somebody that's homo- yeah. homosexual. It was a street term for a fucking chump. Yeah. Would I use it now? No. Right. So, John, uh, let's talk a little bit more about the upcoming album on let's 16th Let's talk a December. lot about it. Yeah. I just wanted to clear the air on that shit because there's a lot right. of shit yeah. being talked. Yeah. And I yeah. always say, come to me. Come to me. You want to have a discussion about it? I'll go right. I'll go right now. I'll go on oh. Zoom with you and, we, and we'll discuss it. Yeah. Let's do it. Nope. Yeah. So, uh, album is awesome. I have a privilege to listen to it. It's really great, uh, powerful. So, how are you satisfied with uh, all, uh, at the end uh, for all products? Guys who worked on it, guys who produced it, and amazing, amazing. Yeah. So great work. Yeah. See, here's here here's the deal, dude. It's the most talented motherfuckers in hardcore on that mm. fucking. And I'm not speaking to myself, but you got Craig yeah. Sitar, yeah. Green bass. You got Tom Capone on guitar. Darren, one of the best hardcore drummers. He filled in for Mackie when Mackie got moms got yeah. sick. And he did the whole tour. That's why I was like, I got to get this fucking guy. He was cool. Then we had Laz from El Nino produce it. Mm. Um, and then Chris Collier, who produced Corn and all these other, mixed all these great records. Uh, he did the latest Leeway thing. And AJ said, you got to get him to mix this shit. And I was fucking, I was fucking blown away. But it was magic. And, and, and even the writing, right? Because we yeah. were all pissed off b- because we went and did that fucking show. Right. Yeah. In the park in 2021, mm. when the whole city opened up two days later. But look at the trash that was talked against us for playing a show. And who did they focus on? Me and Cuz from Black and Blue. They didn't say shit about Jimmy from Murphy's Law. None of the, none yeah. of the other bands for playing Manball. But here's the deal. We stood up to the government and we said enough is enough. Fuck you. And we went and did what we do, which is punk rock. But what happened with that was that. Before that, Tom was so fucking pissed off about everything going on. I said, Tom, pick up your fucking guitar. These are the moments when you got to pick up your guitar and come to my house. I'll come to your house. Let's write. And that's how Souls came about. And it's all about the manipulation and the groupthink and the moving of society in a particular direction and how the people that pull the strings, you never even know who they are. And it's a spiritual battle going on right now for the soul of humanity. That's what that Mm. fucking song is about. Mm. And that was the first fucking song that we even played it at the park that day. And Mm. in 2021, before we recorded it and fucking everybody's like, yo, what the fuck was that new song? And we did shit off the first blood clot, the second uh, up in arms. And we did a Cro-Mag song, a Bad Brain song. We played mm, How Low yeah. Can a Punk Get, which is on the record. Which, mm. by the way, I sent that before we released it. I told the Bad Brains. They said, yeah. And then I sent it to Daryl. And he goes, Squids. They call me Squids. Oh, yeah. That's the way we should have played it. Now, I know mm. he was just, but I know one thing, too. If Daryl didn't like it, he would have said, yo, squids yeah why you, why you gotta do that man like you shouldn't put that out but he gave us his blessing and more mm. and it's all about how low can a punk get look at the message that's why i decided to put that on this record mm. right also, also todd youth is there on the album the what todd youth well Between, todd youth, that was yeah. that was another thing that was that was my brother. When Todd first was a runaway foster child, I protected him. I was like, nobody's touching this fucking kid or you're going to fucking deal with me and my people. Mm. So I've been a fucking, I mean, we did a version of both worlds together with Mackie and Zowie and played, opened up for the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And we always wanted to do something 
So that was a leftover track that we had from Up in Arms. And I wanted to honor Todd. And we dedicated the record to him, too. Yeah. If you look, yeah. the, right, this album dedicated to Todd Youth. So we were able to get the original files, right? And with Pro Tools, we matched up the click track. So everything was in time to the way we wrote it with Todd. Mm. So we kept his background vocal and we kept his lead. Mm. And what we were talking about was the destruction of the planet and what the people, what, what the fuck is going on, right? With yeah. Like what we're doing on this planet and how we're leaving this planet as custodians for the future generations of people to come. See, that's the thing with me. I look for the truth. If somebody says we're destroying the fucking planet and they're in one particular party, I don't care what political party they are in. Yeah, that's the fucking truth. If somebody else from another political party says, hey. Big Pharma is corrupt. They should have never done this and all this other shit. That's the truth. I look for the truth. I don't care who says it. The truth is the truth. It's not subject to time. It's not subject yeah. to political affiliation, religious affiliation, or anything. The truth is the fucking truth. Just like they have that saying, even a broken clock is right twice a day. Mm. Uh, do you think uh, that music especially punk and uh, other genre, uh, have power like when they they speak about truth in the 80s and always hooked up on the truth. Do you think that music has power to bring the truth in front? Of course, that's why, they wanted, that's why they want to stop it. Look yeah. at the way they controlled all the music scenes. They had mm. big rock stars telling you to support what the government is doing, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And even even the Dave Grohl thing, right? And let me tell you how that went down, because that, that was another thing. So the mm. Foo Fighters and all these rock stars played this Vax Live show, and it yeah. was a fucking pro a worldwide propaganda campaign to get everybody to inject mm. the shit. Right, yeah. They took millions and millions of fucking dollars. I don't even know how many millions that the Foo Fighters got paid to play that fucking concert and tell everybody, yeah, get the shots, get the shots. So what I said was, how is this dude singing Bad Brain songs on stage about the most revolutionary shit, Destroy Babylon, Fearless Vampire Killers, The Regulators. He yeah. played Regulator, and then he goes and supports the fucking corrupt government and, and then does you know, Vax only shows. I'm like, when the shit don't even stop the transmission, mm. I was like, that's fucking, that's a fucking sellout. Mm. And every mm. single fucking magazine, Enemy, Rolling Stone, every, you know, all the metal mag, they all called me an anti anti-vaxxer, ex-chromag <laughs> singer, conspiracy theorist, you know, was trashing Dave Grohl and all this other shit. So there, mm. there you go. And, you know, sadly, uh, we've been seeing a lot of people fucking passing away, too. All of a sudden, they're just dropping like flies suddenly. Yeah. So there's a documentary going around, and they interviewed the embalmers and the undertakers, what's coming out of people's bodies that died. And I just tell people, go fucking look at the pictures yourself of what's killing mm. all these people suddenly. Athlete, all these people just dropping dead. It's It's... Listen, and they've managed to silence the punk rockers. That's mm. that's the main thing. You had, well, to me, all those California big bands, I'm not really yeah. into that. Anyway. I'm not into that shit. It's fucking happy punk. I was not part of that. Yeah. Yeah. I was part of the Black Flag, Discharge, mm. Bad Brains, Crow Mags. Fuck you. Like, do you think do you think there's a new new hardcore scene in New York who has the power? I don't know, man. See, to me, I'm like, like, I, I don't care about that. I just, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a musician. Yeah. It's just like they, they interviewed the Bad Brains in like 83 on Headbangers Ball or whatever. It was 82, 83. And, and the guy hosting MTV Headbangers Ball goes, so 
you guys have been doing hardcore a long time. And Doc stopped him and go, hold up. We are not hardcore. We are punk. We started in the 70s. We're punk rock. Mm -hmm. See? And to me, I'm like, we put, he goes, we play punk rock music. Doc, the Bad Brains didn't put no label on what they do. They're just like, we're just bringing forth the music. And that's the way I look at it. If a metalhead wants to come to our show, if a punk rock, right, right. or if a hip, man, you would go see the Bad Brains and hip hop motherfuckers would be in the fucking crowd. KRS-One yeah. or whatever the fuck. So yeah. the music needs to reach as many people as possible. So I don't give a fuck about calling myself hardcore, I, mm. you know, or mm. fucking straight yeah. and, and painting X's on my fucking hand at 60 years old. Come on. Yeah. Give it a fucking yeah. fuck break. I don't care <laughs> about labels. I'm like, I'm about the music. Yeah. And I'm about putting out the best music possible, the best message possible. And mm. Whoever wants to come out, come out. If you don't want yeah. to come out and and, and 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 whatever, don't come out. I can give a fuck less. I don't care if there's 10 people there. Those yeah. 10 people, those 10 people came to see you. You better put on a fucking show. That's right. the way I look at it. Right. So and because, because, of the, yeah. because of the training and the vocal exercise and everything I've done over the years, I'm able to still go up on stage like I did fucking 40 years ago. Right. I'm not standing there right. making excuses or, you know, or whatever the fuck. Like, I, I I say like this, my job is to be an entertainer. My job is to put every motherfucking thing out on stage. And I've done that over four decades. I've done that. <clears throat> and I'm yeah. still doing it. Yeah. So the album is out. Uh, how are you going to promote it? it? Do it's you out, it's out on the 16th. Yeah. Yeah. And do you planning to go on tour maybe europe next summer i mean i mean who knows you know like they just had the g20 conference they're talking yeah. about the digital health pass nobody knows what the fuck is gonna happen in the mm. next year listen but are you still on... still for touring do you love touring i love touring of yeah. course you know but it's hard to tour right now too because a lot of people are fucking you know they're 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 canceling tours. They're fucking, you know, you have to pick the markets properly because like it's getting tough economically and everything. So, you know, we plan on playing shows <clears throat> and um, we got a big one coming up uh, in January with underdog and brick by brick and some other bands in the city. And uh, you know, like, listen, we'll play as much as possible. That's, 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 uh, that's what it comes down to because, you know, you could put out a great record, but if you can't go on stage and do what you did on the record, then to me, that's not really what it's about. I always looked at the fact that the Bad Brains, the only record that matched what they did live was was the Roar cassette, the first, mm -hmm. you know, with I and all those songs. Like, so you should be able to outperform what you did in a recording. And, you know, that's that's. You know that's that's the plan, but we'll see. You know we'll see what happens. And for now, I'm I'm working on my book. I'm I'm doing a documentary yeah. about old school New York yeah. with this director, and I got a lot of projects going on. But you know, music is music is part of my life. It's 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 what I do. So um, yeah, there there will be that too, and just keep creating and writing and doing and doing uh, and doing service, man. I just was out. Yeah. In rain the other day we fed like 700 people mm. and i'm doing i just put an online um fucking fundraising campaign for the food charity that feeds thousands of people every single month so um you know it's not just music that's that's a part of the yeah. whole shit but yeah. you know it, it it's it's what took me out of a fucking bad life situation so right. and there's nothing better than playing music Unfortunately, it's become all this bullshit. Um, don't support this guy. Don't do it. <laughs> all this bullshit by these twerps that are on fucking line behind fake profiles. And, you know, if anybody wants to believe that, go ahead. Don't come to the show. I could give a fuck less because that that if you're just going to believe a bunch of bullshit that you read online, then I, there's no fucking hope for you. And, 
you know, like I said, if you look at every single album I've ever put out from both worlds to blood clot to crow mags to this now, my message has been consistent through all of the fucking four decades. Yeah. So, John, thank you very much for your time. Stay strong. I hope you to see you in Europe with the new album, with the band. Yes. Thank you very hey, much. And, and let me tell you something, guys. Yeah. This is my final message. Get up every day, work hard. Challenge yourself. Do a little internal thinking. Get get off the internet. When I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is meditate. I move. Yeah. I get a little exercise. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not jumping on this shit. So yeah. sit back. You know, cool heads prevail. Think about everything that they're telling you and question it. You're not a conspiracy theorist if you question all the shit that the government is telling right. you. That's our job. That was punk rock hardcore prior to fucking 2020. And that's what it needs to get back to. Yeah. Eat healthy. Eat good food. Exercise. If you don't do that, you're going to be another statistic taking all these pharmaceutical medications and all the rest of it. That's what they want. They want you yeah. to be sick and weak and you know, please save me. Yeah. That's yeah, why I moved yeah. to Florida. I moved to Florida yeah. to start growing my own fucking food and all the rest of the shit. But then what do they say online? Yeah, he moved to Florida because he's <laughs> around all the Trump supporters. This, yeah. this, these yeah. people are fucking idiots. I live yeah. in a Hare Krishna community. How can I be racist if I'm a Hare Krishna, which right. teaches you right. that you're not the body, that yeah. none of these material yeah. labels matter? Yeah. And it, anybody that wants to read the books, you can log on to my page. I always push push uh, the yeah. Bhaktivedanta Vedic Library dot org, and you can read or listen to the to the yoga books and the teachings of India for free. But that's 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 my message to all the people, man. Think for yourself. Don't worry. We were always. That's why. And even in the music, you see how diverse all the bands were back in the day. Circle yeah, Church. Yeah. Yeah. Black Flag. Black Flag didn't sound like the Dead Kennedys. Dead Kennedys didn't sound like the Bad Brains. Bad Brains didn't sound like the Clash. The Clash didn't sound like the Ramones because yeah. nobody copied each other. They thought for themselves and they played what they wanted to play. Now all the music sounds the same. Everybody's thought process. <laughs> right. Right. Break right. away from the group. Be a fucking individual. Like the right. Chromags wrote, you come into this world with nothing except yourself. You're going to leave with nothing except yourself. It's yeah. about you. Focus on you. Stop yeah. worrying about everybody else. Work hard. If you're a musician, do the best fucking job you can. Put the best music out. If you're a writer, do the, do the best writing. Study. Learn your fucking shit. Whatever, like I coach, I coach people that run million dollar fucking businesses. Like yeah. These yeah. successful entrepreneurs, I'm coaching them on discipline. Yeah. Stay fucking disciplined. That's what it takes. You have to stay disciplined physically, mentally, and spiritually right now. Yeah. That's the biggest message anybody can walk away with this interview from. And don't believe what's on the fucking television, man. Go out and experience life for yourself. They tell you to hate somebody because of whatever. Fuck that. Love that yeah. motherfucker if they're telling you to hate them. Because whatever they tell you, it's the opposite. Yeah. That's what we want to remember. <laughs> Thank you, John. That's a great Thank message you. for the end. See you hey, man, around. it's a message and... for the kids, man. It's a message Thank for you. the kids. And Thank I was you. one of them. I was a lost fucking Thank crazy you. motherfucker on yeah. the street in the 70s. And here I am at 60 still doing it. And you can too. Yeah. Thank you. He's See from ya. New York City to Boogie Down Bronx. <laughs> Thank you, man. See Later. Ya. Thank you, brother. Peace.